it's time to receive our offering. Remember, we still haven't got the ushers going yet because we're moving into this thing slowly, okay? We're moving it slowly. We do have our mask off today. But even then, if you don't feel comfortable taking your mask off, that is fine. Leave your mask on. Some of y'all wish you would wear your mask because you look so much better. <laughs> but, but you can wear a mask or not. Just not Am I on check, check, check? <laughs> I'll just tell you to put your mask back. I'll just put my mask on. What are you telling me? You said some people didn't. They didn't just throw me to put my mask on. They just threw it on the microphone. They threw it on the microphone. Y'all being funny. He said throw it on the microphone, but it is on. <laughs> it got good. Okay. So moving in slowly, we're going to have, maybe by next week, we're going to have our ushers back again because, again, we want to, if you see somebody wearing a mask, do not, don't say anything other than just smile and then be okay because some people still haven't had all their vaccinations yet. And some people, even with their vaccinations, they still want to be very cautious. And, of course, the law now is when you go into a place of business, if it says wear a mask, wear a mask but if it doesn't say wear a mask you don't have to if you've been fully vaccinated and like i said i have and if you really want to get a good vaccination go to pamela animal hospital <laughs> they give you covid and distemper and rabies all at the same time it's wonderful and okay and parvo that's right okay so so you can <laughs> you can drop off your offering at the front when you come in or drop it off when you leave uh but, but we're going to pray for it right now let's see here i'm getting kind of behind myself or ahead of myself where'd i put it there it is all right ready hold it up if, you don't, if you've already given your offer just hold your hand up if you haven't given your offer hold that up if you don't have anything to give hold that up just somebody hold something up amen amen ready I lift my offering to you, let it please you, O oh Lord. This is my seed, although it leaves my hand, it will never leave my life. You will multiply, accept my seed, O oh Lord. Give Lord a hand clap. All right, man. Praise the Lord. Saints, real good to the Lord prayer. Does anybody have an outspoken request this morning? How about other lifting hands for special needs? Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the time and opportunity to gather in your house and amongst thy people, Father. We just come together to this morning with one mind and one accord to worship and praise your name, Father. Not only for what you've done, but Father, for who you are, Lord, how you move in our lives. We just ask you to continue to move this morning in each and every situation. You see the hands, you know the need, Lord God. So blood according to your riches and glory, the testimony may be given of your goodness and grace. Be with us in the remainder of this service this morning. When we depart, we can say we've been in the presence of God. In Jesus' name, the church said, Give Lord a hand out of hand clap of praise. Ready to sing some glory, glory. Ready? It's glory, glory.
stepping in here. And God speaks to do something for some of y'all today that you've been waiting for for a long, long time. And it's on the way. Look at somebody tell me it's coming. It's coming. Really? Really? Don't say really. Say ready. <laughs>
isn't God good? All the time, God is good. Yep. I was so excited about that song. And when Linda said, why you put that up there? I said, you said you liked the song. She said, I thought you were singing. She didn't like the song. She didn't say she didn't like the song. She just, I'm going to shut up because she's watching right now. Okay. All right. Isn't God good? All the time. That is good. Amen. Now, we started this before Mother's Day, so we're going to finish it. Next week, we're going back into Revelation. So please remember, next week, we go back into Revelation. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on with Israel right now, too. Uh, uh, okay, yeah. get your Bibles out. And turn to the book of Malachi. I already have, look, that's right. Turn to the book of Malachi. Malachi, Malachi. Turn to the book of Malachi, Malachi. We started this uh, the week before Mother's Day, and we're going to finish it up tonight, today. Um, and I, the reason I want to finish it up, because I, I felt like if I didn't finish this up, that I will be leaving you hanging, and I didn't want to do that. So to keep from being, leaving you hanging, I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're going to do it. Stand for the reading of the word. Malachi, if you don't know where Malachi is, turn to the book of Matthew, Get to, open up to the book of Matthew and turn left, that's Malachi. It's the last book in the New Testament, or I mean the Old Testament, the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi. Here we go, I'm trying to figure out where I'm at, there we are. Okay, Malachi, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, says the Lord of hosts. But you said, where shall we return? In other words, you're saying we're, we're separated, but tell me how. And tell me how to reconnect. Y'all say we need to reconnect. All the time. Marriages need to reconnect. Families need to reconnect. On your job, reconnect. Especially as the COVID's getting better uh, handle. We need to really need a whole lot of reconnecting. So he says, well, a man robbed God, yet you have robbed me. But you say, where have you robbed thee in tithes and offerings? You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes to the storehouse, that you may be able to have be, be, be meat in my house, and prove me now where herewith, said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour out a blessing, that you should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, neither shall your vine cast your fruit before its time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome uh, uh, land, says the Lord of hosts. Let's pray. Father, I love you, Lord. I praise your name. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I know, God, that you are alive and well, Lord, and you are on the throne. I know, God, that everything is in your hands and in your time. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister mighty to us and through us, Father, and help us, God, to be ready for what's coming. Lord, because if there's ever been a time we need to reconnect, now is the time because we know that the enemy is on the loose and he's working hard. I ask you right now, Lord, to help us get our mind in the game, to get our, our, our spirit in the game, to get our soul in the game, to, to, to know that what we do now is going to, going to echo in eternity. And I'd rather good echo in eternity for me than bad. In the name of Jesus we pray. And the church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated if you can. A little boy was seen digging in his yard by a neighbor. The neighbor approached and inquired what the little man was the little boy was doing. And he said, I'm burying my goldfish. I'm having a funeral for it. He said, Oh, I'm sorry, said the neighbor, who continued, but that's an awfully big hole for a goldfish, isn't it? The boy patted down the heap of dirt and replied, that's because he's inside your cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mark that one. Never use again. All right. All right. All right. So I had a feeling that was going to happen. I could see y'all looking like that, so I come up with a, I had brought another one with me. A man placed some flowers on the grave of his dearly departed mother and started back toward his car 
when his attention was diverted to another man kneeling at a grave. The man seemed to be praying with profound intensity and kept repeating, Why did you have to die? Why did you have to die? The first man approached him and said, Sir, I don't wish to interfere with your private grief, but this demonstration of pain is more than I've ever seen before. For whom do you mourn so deeply? A child? A parent? The mourner took a moment to collect himself and then replied, No, my wife's first husband. <laughs> That was better. <laughs> Throw that book. <laughs> Throw that book. I saw some guys doing this. We're going. <laughs> All right. Okay. So now, uh, we started this last week. I was going to go a couple weeks ago. So I'm just going to do a few slides so you can get some continuity with what was going on so you'll know this. Uh, and it, and, it, and uh, uh, don't, I heard some people say, every time I go to church, the preacher's always talking on money. Well, not this preacher. This is like the fourth time in how many years you've heard it. So if you hear it every time you come, you don't come very often in the last 14 years. <laughs> All right, you pick those Sundays. All right. Uh, God operates through principles. God's principles challenge us. Amen? Amen? And our faith determines our actions and our faith determines our attitudes toward that challenge. So now, the, the, this is the only principle where God gives us the opportunity to challenge Him back. Why? He says boldly, look, prove me. I don't have it. Look, He doesn't say, well, maybe or pot. No, He said, prove me. I want you to see. And that word prove means literally, watch this. Prove means to test, especially how you test metals with heat, intense heat, that you really get the, 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 the metal so hot that you, got, you have to get the, the, the impurities and you have to scrape the dross off of the heat. He said, that's what I want you to do to me. I want you to put me to the test of all time test. Investigate me. Examine me. You know what he's trying to say is, and here's what he's saying is, if you take care of my business, I'll take care of yours. Amen. You take care of mine, I'll take care of yours. So now, I want us to read Malachi again. Uh, of course, we just read it, but I'm going to read read just one more time. By the Lord I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from my ordinances, and you have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? You have robbed me. But you say, where have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. You have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, and there may be meat in my house. And prove me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there you shall have not any room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground, Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome lamb, says the Lord of hosts. Now remember, this is, this is from last week, or week before last. This is the, it's amazing how this is the last message that God gave Israel before he went silent for 400 years. Wow. He gives you this message, then he goes, zip. In other words, I'm going to give it time. I'm going to give you time to let this digest. Now, I'm going to give you time to let this digest. I'm going to give you time to even implement it. There was this one preacher came to the church. He, was a, he had a trial sermon. He, done it, he preached that sermon, and they got him as a preacher. The next week, he preached the same sermon. And after a while, he preached the same sermon for four weeks. And one of the deacons carried him up and said, Dude, you're a wonderful preacher, and we like that sermon, but... You know, you preached the same sermon. It took us a while to figure it out, but you preached the same sermon for six weeks. He goes, yeah, I know. He said, well, when you go, ain't you got anything else? He said, I got a bunch of sermons. So why do you keep preaching the same one? He says, well, when y'all start living that one. Okay. All right. All right. There you go. So here, here's the time. And God gave him 400 years to digest this. So he's telling them, look, you're robbing me. You're, you, you, you're cutting your own throat. I remember I had I told you about my uncle that was so mean 
that in the morning he had to hold a gun to his head when he shaved to keep from cutting his own throat. <laughs> that, was a mean, that was a mean man. Okay. Well, do you know what? When you hear what God's saying is you're cutting your own throat. You're taking me out of the equation. I want to be part of it, but I'm not going to spoon feed you. You have to do your part if you want me to do my part. And so here it is. It's very specific. Watch this. It says here's the target. And again, this, we're getting ready to go right into the new week, okay? But it's specific. Bring all the tithes uh, specified into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. Now, remember we talked about last time, storehouse and house are not the same. The house, this is the house, but the storehouse was the treasury of the house. And none of those that mean just bring it to the storehouse, but if you check out the Hebrew and back it up and check out the root of it, it means literally not only am I bringing the tithe to the treasury, but I'm trusting God with all of my finances. Not just the 10%. I'm trusting Him with all of them, and the proof is by that 10%. So, so again, let's just go a little bit further, and then we'll, we're going to jump in some good stuff here. I love it. This is so awesome. Okay, so now, he said, prove me therewith. So, so the challenge was not God punishing them. Have you ever, you couldn't meet your bills, and you couldn't do this, and you couldn't do that, and things just kept piling up, and you said, God, why are you punishing me? And sometimes... Matter of fact, a lot of times I can hear God, you know, in heaven in my mind going, it's not me, buddy, it's you. Amen. It's not me. You follow what I show you, you're still going to have troubles. We all are. It rains on the just and unjust life. The difference is when I'm with you doing the problems and when I'm not with you through your problems. So, so here it is. Uh, uh, he says proof. And then, then, there's the, then there's the promise. He said, I will, I will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. There shall not be enough room to receive it. It's change for the good, or in other words, change for the good if the good would change. In other words, God's people would see a difference if they would change. We're waiting for God to change. He said, I'm the Lord God. I change not. I've got these principles. You follow my principles. You change. Not him. How many times do you want God to change? And God's going, uh-uh, I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. It's not me, he's changing. Okay? But you know what about, you know what I found out about change? About the other people I know that appreciate a good change is a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so here we go. And then there is the power. He said, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. In other words, I'll call off that total destruction that they had called on themselves. They called the dogs on themselves. Okay. So now watch this. I want you to understand something. We're jumping in this week. The tithe doesn't guarantee a problem-free life. I've had just as many problems or more since I started tithing years ago. But the, the promise is that when I'm in my problem, now I've got back up. I've watched God do things the impossible so, so, so many times. Remember, if I take care of his business, he'll take care of mine. Okay? Hey, remember this. If you do what you can do, God will do what you can't do. The problem is so many times we don't do what we can do, but we expect God to do what we can't do. Okay? So, so there's the problem. So here we go. New stuff. So then the tipping point, the teeter-totter. This is where God gave it. Now the decision's ours. Okay? So, so now notice, he called his house a storehouse. His house a storehouse within the house. So there's a principle designated or designed by God. It's called the tithe principle. Okay, so now, again, uh, listen carefully. Because I don't want this to feel like it's just money, 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 or the preacher's trying to beat us up for money. No, this has got, look, look, if that's what you think, then you've already come to the wrong place. This is you getting back into sync with God. Getting back in sync with God. It's got nothing to do with me. Matter of fact, it honestly, it's not the church. 
This has got between you and God. This is getting your plug plugged back in. You know, uh, Daddy called me. I called Daddy this morning. <clears throat> and somehow or another, he had, you know, you got you got 230 coming into the house in the ground. And somehow or another, one of the 230s wind up, the ground came off. And he and I called it a single phase. And this house started a single phase. It started burning up stuff. And he said, I don't know what's going on. He called an electrician. Said, 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 the problem is not in the house. The problem is you're not connected Come on now. He says, so you got to call the light company and they'll reconnect you. That bad wire. See that bad wire right there? Okay. So some of us, we're running around trying to figure out what to do and God's going, why don't you just look up? Wow. Reconnect to the source. Okay? So, so now, here's the tithe principle. First, it is, watch this, here's the tithe principle. It's recognized by God. He says in Hebrews 11 and 6, without faith it's impossible. There is no way to please God. The tithe principle is directly connected to your faith. You know, I heard one time that the devil was trying to kill a Christian and he tried to shoot him in the chest, but he had on the full armor of God and, and he hit him in the chest and he hit the breastplate of righteous and I can't get him there. He hit him in the head he was wearing the helmet of salvation couldn't get him there. He tried to take his legs out, but he was he was wearing his feet were shot to get preparation of gospel peace. He said, I know where I can get him. So he went around behind him and shot him in the wallet and killed him graveyard dead. I know it's, it's really funny when you think about it later. Okay. All right. So now, so now, watch this. It's recognized by God. God's watching us. It's you think you're connected by God because you pray to Him. Well, yeah, you are. But again, it's like Dad with his wires being all crossed and being coming loose. He was getting it, but he weren't getting it. It was burning up stuff. It was destroying stuff in his house. He lost his washing machine. He wrote on the phone. He was going, <sighs> because it tore up his phone. It, it tore up uh, all kinds of stuff in the house because he was not correctly connected to the power source. Okay? So, it's recognized by God. Not only is it recognized by God, but the tithe principle is reciprocal. Watch this. It blesses the giver and the receiver. Wow. It blesses the giver and receiver. So I haven't received much from God lately. Let me just ask you a question. Have you given much to God lately? Well, if He give to me, I'll give to Him. I know you are. What am I? I know you are. What am I? He's the Lord. He changes not. He says, when you're plugging in, I've done my part. You do yours. And when you do your part and plug into the source, that's when the blessings begin to flow. So it blesses the giver and the receiver. Okay? And it is rewarding in every area of your life. Now this isn't, your, it, but people say, I'm paying my tithe. No, you're not paying your tithe. I'm giving God back what belongs to Him. Okay? This is not a payment plan. This is not a penalty. Well, i got to give God 10%. You know, no, it's not a penalty, it's not a payment, but it is a system set up by God, set in motion by God Himself. A system set in motion by God Himself. And it's connected directly to Galatians 6, 7, and 9. And that is, be not deceived, God is not mocked. He's not played with, He's not fooled around with. Whatever you sow, that you shall reap. And you may not reap it right away, but he covers that. He says, but don't grow weary of well-doing. Doing what is right. Because he says in due time, when the time is right, you will receive. Okay? So, so there, there's that. Let's keep on going. All right. Now, now, why is the tithe connected to the storehouse? Because the storehouse, the ha this is God's house. This is where... God's people come to refresh themselves, where they come to learn God's word, where they come to fellowship. That's where they come to be amongst themselves, to, to understand together what's going on. We have collective faith. We can talk about problems together. So it's a very powerful, powerful thing. Because remember, God designed the tithe system as a system of blessing. 
a system or cycle of blessing. So, watch this. The, the, the church cannot sustain itself. That's the ministry internal. It just don't happen. Okay? It cannot sustain others. Ministry external. Not because God doesn't have it, but because He wants to, he wants to invest in us and He wants us to invest in Him. Okay? He invests in us. He wants us to invest in Him. I bring in, in the tithe and offering. When we do that, all of the tithe and offering, we bring it to Him, then we become a conduit. And we're blessed then to be a blessing. Some of us, listen to me. You say, I don't understand. But let me ask you this question. Are you a conduit or are you, a, just, are you, are, are you just a vessel to collect? If you're a vessel to collect, you know, I've heard people say, Look, I've heard people say, uh, even uh, our, our, look, look, our, our, our rock real fair. What? I said, what? Our, our rock real fair. I'm not being fed. And I go, well, if you chew what you got and swallow it and make some room, you'll be fed. But as long as you keep, Bethany, we got Bethany who's four years old. And she did not like greens at all. And we had broccoli. And it was really, really good. Steamed broccoli with cheese. And she put it in her mouth and Beverly said, you're not going anywhere until you eat that broccoli. And she had it in her mouth like a big old chaw of tobacco. And she just went. <laughs> and so, Beverly said, sit there until you swallow it. She went, mm. And she stood there at me like, Dad, you going to help me? And I went, you ain't getting me in this. no, no, no. You and Mama got this going on, and I'm a back Mama, I can promise you. And she, went, mm. and she sat there for 45 minutes and would not swallow it. She hated the taste of broccoli, but she kept it in her mouth for 45 minutes. Eventually, it lost its flavor, and she swallowed. Okay. There's things when you come to church that you don't necessarily want to hear. There's things you want to... Sometimes, sometimes your door gets knocked on. Sometimes your heart gets knocked on. Sometimes your head gets knocked on. Sometimes your hiney gets... Yeah, we'll say knocked on, okay? And so you don't appreciate it or like it, and but if it's God's Word, guess what? It's God's Word. And God got on me. That's why I'm preaching this now, because God got on me. He said, when are you going to preach the whole Word? This is the whole word. And watching what's happening in the, the nation right now, how many had to wait in line for gas lately? I did. I went to gas station. I had to go out and see, see some gas at the shell station. I got out. I had to go through six policemen to get to the gas station, to the pump. Because they were out there because people are fighting over it. Fighting over the gas. You know, and so, 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 again, I, 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 times are crazy. Oh, and a couple weeks ago, gas had gone up from 220 something, 240 something. I said, this is crazy. It went up 20 cents. 35. Guess what? I paid almost $4 a gallon for medium grade Whoa. a couple days ago. $3.89 for medium grade. And when I put it in my car, my car run like an old jalopy. I started singing chitty chitty bang bang, chitty chitty bang bang. <laughs> okay. So, 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 so here, watch this. Y'all watch this. This is good stuff. I hope you, I hope you get this now. It's good stuff. Ready? Here, oh, look at that. What's that? The windows of heaven pouring, opening it up and pouring. Okay. How many like to see that? Yeah, I like to see that. Not at the gas station. I'd rather see a hose doing that in my car, but yeah. Okay. So again, it's the tipping point. This is where you decide. You decide, not me. You decide if you want to be blessed. Ready? It's an act of faith. Do I really trust Him? Do I really trust His Word? Watch this. Do I really trust His system? Remember, tithing is a system. It's not just an act. It's a system. It's a reciprocal system. Do I really trust him? Do I trust him enough to, to, to give it to him? You know, 
uh, to get gas last night, I had to drop off my, my ID card to go back out and get some gas and then go back in and get my ID card and then pay for it after I got it. The place I went to before that, I had the lady said, well, it'll be 10 gallons or 20 gallons. I said, ma'am, I have no idea how much I need. She said, well, you can get 10 or 20. I said, I don't know how much I need. And she said, well, they will put you down for 10. I said, well, if I don't need 10. She said, well, well, we'll just not charge your card. I'm thinking, yeah, right. <laughs> you just charged me for 10. So I went out and got it, and that was some more of that gas. And I took off, chitty, chitty, bang, bang, chitty, chitty, bang, bang. At $3 a gallon, chitty, chitty, bang, bang, bang. So, so, so here we go. What's your motivation? Religion or relationship? Do I, am I a religious person? No, I, I'm definitely, you look at me, I'm not religious. Never been, never want to be religious. But I do have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I love him and I know he'll take care of business. So now, now watch this. Then there's the, there's the promise. He said, I will pour out a blessing. Didn't say I dip, I'd pour out. Didn't dip, not ration like we're having a gas ration. He said, I will pour out a blessing. And it'll be beyond your capacity to even receive. Can you imagine? It would be nice for God to bless you where you couldn't even receive it all. Amen. So then, then there's protection. He said, I'll devour, I'll, I'll rebuke the devourer for your sake. Doesn't mean, look, it doesn't mean you're not going to have problems. That word open means to loose. It means to throw open. Just throw open. You know, some of us are just getting cracks and wonder why we're getting cracked. And God says, if you do it my way, I will throw it open to you. Okay? But see, again, you've got to get locked into the system. If you're not locked into the system, if you think this, I'm, I'm not giving them all my money. You're not giving them. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I'll tell you. I had a guy in my family years ago. Uh, he, he, was, he, was, he was fussing at me because I had started tithing. I told him I was tithing. And he said, yeah, right. I'm going to give my money to the church. And he really got upset. You know what he did? After he got upset with me, he said, he said, I'm not giving God anything. He said, because I worked hard for my money. I done this myself. And I said, I wouldn't say that if I was you. He says, no, I worked hard for my money, and I'm going to take care of it because that's my money. I need it for later. God ain't getting any of this because I did it. A couple of weeks later, insurance went crazy. And instead of paying $20 a week, he started paying $400 a month. And then it got even higher. And it, it got another tax bracket and it messed him up. Everything messed him up. And he came to me. And he said, hey, buddy. I said, what? He said, I, I'm in a bind. I said, why are you in a bind? He said, because I got these bills to pay and I can't pay them. And I said, but you said that you work all, you get all the money, you're saving up money, you got it. He said, he said, go ahead, go ahead. I said, no, I'm not telling you anything. You just told me. He said, I know, I know, I know. He said, I said, you're still making the same thing. I said, I'm still making the same thing, but now they're taking out more money. And I said, but what about, he says, I know, you know what he told me? He said, you were right. He said, I took God out of the equation. He said, I'm so sorry. And he said, I will never take God out of the equation again. I know that God did this. That God, I mean, God gives me the strength to do this. God gives me the strength to work. God gives me the, the way to make the money. It's all God. Although He uses me, it's still God. It's not just me. And do you know that two weeks later, He got another job making twice as much money? Once He told God, God, I'm sorry. You're, you're the one. You're the reason. Not me. You. Okay. So now. So here we go. Let's get, I'm getting, getting ready. I'm getting ready to close. Some of y'all are saying, please do. <laughs> Ready? Here's the tipping point. Ready? When you tithe, you open heaven, you shut hell. Doesn't mean hell's not going to attack. Doesn't mean heaven's going to send out roses and, and pop the circumstance all the time. It just means there's a blessing. He opens the blessing and closes the curse or limits the curse. But when you refuse to do what God called you to do and not tithe, he shuts heaven and he opens hell. Wow. That's powerful. That's not my word. Again, I don't have a pony in this race because I know, I know, and I've been doing it. For
what I've done since I since I was in my early twenties. I tithe my whole time to God. I know better. I've been doing that, and God's always blessed me. Have I had everything I wanted? No, but have I had everything I needed? Yes. Okay, God, I'm not God's spoiled child, but I am God's child. He takes care of. See, God's way. Well, let me just read this to you. Hey, guy, chapter one. Jesus, this is this is before Malachi. This is what the Lord of Heaven's of armies. This is the New Living Translation. This is what the Lord of Heaven's armies says. The people are saying the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Really? They've been out of captivity eighteen years. Can y'all say eighteen? Our oldest granddaughter graduated college Thursday night. She'll graduate. High school in a couple of weeks. Okay. Eight, 18. That's been a long way for us to keep her on my lap. They've been out of captivity 18 years. And they're saying the time is not yet to rebuild the house of the Lord. Really? Whoa. Then the people sent this message through the prophet Haggai, or the Lord sent this message to, through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of the heavens of armies says. Look at what's happening to you. Consider your ways. You've planted much, but you harvest little. You eat, but are not satisfied. You drink, but are still thirsty. You put on clothes, but cannot keep warm. Your wages disappear as though you were putting them in pockets filled with holes. This is what the Lord of, heaven, of heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, break down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hope for rich harvest, but my house lies in ruins, says the Lord of heaven's armies. While all of you are busy building your own fine houses, it is because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I've called for a drought in your fields and hills. I drought to wither the grain and grapes and olive trees and all of your other crops. I drought to starve you and your livestock to ruin everything you have worked so hard to get. Consider your ways. Why? Why? Here's the tipping point. Am I going to do it God's way? And heaven's open and hell shut? Or am I going to do it my way and shut heaven and open hell? Well, it's just not time yet. The time's not right. I, I, one day, one day, I should say it before I got saved, one day I'll get saved. One day I'll get saved. The time's not right. And then one day, I, I, one day I'll tithe, or one day I'll give unto God, but the time's not right. And then finally God got it through my thick, tater, mater, head, that if I put him first, he'll put me first. Still have problems. You know, uh, when my mother-in-law came in to get saved, she was Jehovah's Witness. And when she came in to get saved, I'm talking about Beverly's mama. Linda's mama was, has always been a Christian lady, but she was a Jehovah's Witness, my first mother-in-law. And she came in that Saturday, Easter morning, and got saved. And she said, and she told me after she got saved, she said, I didn't come to church today uh, to hear the message. I come to church today to get saved. I said, well, it was a pretty powerful message. And she said, it wasn't the message that he preached. She said it was the message that you and my daughter lived. She said, I've watched y'all for years. I first thought y'all were crazy. I talked junk about y'all because you always put God first. She said, but I've watched, and you had more trouble than any of the rest of the youngest. But the difference was you might have had more trouble, but, you, but, but I watched God every time deliver you. Every time. And she said, the God I serve doesn't do that. The God you serve does, and that's the God I want to be with. And she's been a Christian all these years since then. So now, now there's a blessing of stewardship, you know. Okay? So, so, so everything I have comes from God. Everything I have is going to go back to God. You know, you know one thing, I, I've been around a long time. I've preached hundreds of funerals. I've preached hundreds of funerals since, the, since uh, COVID. It feels like i got a funeral today. Uh, that's why I'm dressed up in this suit. But i got a funeral today. But what I have discovered is, out of all these years, I've never seen a hearse carrying a U-Haul behind me. 
When Rockefeller, the richest man in the world, died, this somebody asked him, how much did he leave behind? And somebody else said everything. So what am I doing down here that I can carry up there with me? What I'm doing right now with y'all, I can carry to heaven with me. Okay? That's awesome. What I'm doing right now, I'll carry to heaven with me. And the reward that you get from following it, I'll get rewarded just like y'all will. Isn't it awesome when you tell somebody else you'll get rewards that they get? It's amazing how God works it. Okay? So, but until we get, look, so God gives, it's like the rain cycle. The rain cycle comes down, but if the rain cycle did not go back up, there would be no rain. The rain comes down, and then it evaporates, and it goes back up. Okay? So, until the rain goes back up into the clouds, then we would have no more rain. The same way, when we give back to God, we become a conduit or, uh, you know. So, I want to, you'll be a conduit or a container. A container, you just receive the rain, but you never bring it back up. A conduit, I receive from God, and I give it back to God. How do I give it back to God? Through my tithe and offering. That's how I give it back. That's how I give that back. Giving, uh, nothing has more impact on a person to, than to be a blessing. And the highest level of living that we can achieve is to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. So, so, so we give back to God. We directly bring our tithes and offer to the storehouse. We use our time, talent, treasure, and our testimony. We give it to God through here. But then we do it indirectly by giving to others. Our time, our talent, our treasures. We bless others. So we bless God's house first, then we bless others. Okay? So there's a partnership. I like you know, I would call it stewardship, but I like to call it when you tithing is more than stewardship, tithing is partnership. I didn't put that up there. I just want you to think about it. Tithing is not just stewardship. Tithing is partnership. Because when I give back to God, then He gives back. It's like the rain going into the clouds and comes back down. So now, I'm getting ready to close. Let's see here. Let's see. I already read, oh, okay. I just read that to you. Praise God. I'm getting so, getting so, getting so into it, I'm not really, here it is. Watch this. Watch this now. Here it is, my house full, the principal, equals your house full, promise. Think about it. My house full, the principles. Your house full, the promise. And he said, I'll promise you, I'll present you a blessing that you cannot receive. So, so he's saying is, Watch the condition. Here's how you do it. Watch the condition of his house. It's simple. Watch the condition of his house. And then I'm going to ask you a question. And I, I'm just throwing that out. I'm not telling you. I'm just saying, watch the condition of his house, his work. If you're not doing what you can to help, then just remember what condition his house is in will be the condition your house is in. Wow. That's powerful. And you know I'm not a money preacher, never being no like it, I can't stand it. But the Lord told me to, to get to hear that thunder right now. Is that thunder or a motorcycle? <laughs> the Harleys are coming to get us. <laughs> Granny Clampett saw Granny Clampett saw those guys on a surfboard. She called them the Grunions. She said, Jan, come out here, the Grunions are coming. All right. So, so, remember, the condition you leave God's stuff in is re will reflect in your own stuff. Wow. That's, that's not my word. It's His. So now, watch this. Are you just getting by? Are you depending on yourself? Are you living in the blessings or are you living in the blessings of the Lord? 
choice is yours. It's not mine. I don't have a pony in that race. Me and God got it together when it comes to this. It took him a little while to get through that thick skull of mine, but once he got it through that thick skull, it was never, it was always been the same ever since. I was 20 something years old. I like, like 23, 24, once he got it through that thick skull, it was never an issue again, ever an issue again. Because once he got me to understand it, I understood it. Okay, so now, I'm getting ready to close. Trust me in this, says the Almighty, Malachi 3.10. If you can't trust God, who can you trust? Our God is able. Y'all guys, come here. BJ, go here and play that piano. Some pretty, some pretty, 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 pretty music. Our God is able to turn any necessity into an opportunity. Prove Him and see. There's two things I have discovered in life. When I can't figure it out, when I can't, when I can't work it out. There's two things I have learned. In her essence, I can sing my way out of praise, and I can sow my way out. Sing and sow, those two words. I should have put them up there, sing and sow. I can praise my way out, and I can sow my way out. Now, now you need to ask God which one you need to be doing. I should always, you should always be singing anyway, you should always be sowing. But sometimes, you know, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you this story. There was this person, and I won't get into how who it was. It was years ago. It was like, wow. It had to be 20 years ago. There was a person who had lost somebody very dear to them. And they were mad at the whole world. And it's understandable that they were upset. But they were mad at their own people. And this person had shut a lot of people out of their life, including me. I was not their pastor. I was their friend. Not only had they shut me out, they barred me. I had done nothing. And I heard that this person's husband had got sick. And they were in with a heart attack and they were having trouble paying bills. And somebody told me, said, well, and they weren't so mean to everybody, somebody might help them out, blah, 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 all that stuff. And I went, no, 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 That's not how they help So I prayed about it. And this is 20 something years ago. I, bought, I went out and bought, I heard they were hungry. So I went out and bought over $100 worth of groceries 20 years ago. That's a lot of groceries. And I said, God, this is my seed. Not my tithe, my seed. There's a difference. The tithe is still in the storehouse. It's my seed. And it was a costly seed because I really didn't have it, but I learned off with the groceries. And I went to the back door. I said, Lord, this is my seed to help restore some relationships. And I went to the back door and I knocked on the door. And the person looked at me and said, oh, it's you. I said, I promise you I won't take up much time. I said, I just heard you're having some trouble, and I got something for you. The whole time I'm thinking, God, this is my seed. I'm sowing my seed. I'm sowing my seed. I'm sowing my seed. And I walked out to the car and brought in two bags of groceries. Went back out in the car and brought in some more bags. Can you imagine $100 worth of groceries 20 years ago? 
it up. But then I'll get out your way because you told me, you know, I told you it would keep you long. And when I started to walk away, that person grabbed me and said, will you please sit down? And I sat down. The person was my elder about 20 years. I sat down. And they looked at me and they said, uh, would you like some coffee? I said, uh, okay, sure. They said, let me some coffee. And when they sat down, they said, I looked right there in the eye and I said, I am so sorry for how I have treated you the last six months. Thank you. 
Christmas donations so we can kind of recoup some of that because we didn't sell them all like yesterday because of the record, because of the gas. Uh, so, so today you can go back and get us hot dogs and guarantee they will give you gas. <laughs> you can't use it in your car, <laughs> but it can make the ride a whole lot more fun. <laughs> Ride to the gas station a whole lot more fun. <laughs>